to make her maiden speech, Emma Hardy. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, for the opportunity to make my speech uh, during this important debate. Since arriving in Parliament, I have spent the past few weeks being greeted with the now familiar phrase, Ah, so you're the new Alan Johnson, are you? <laughs> Which, despite the obvious and not quite so obvious differences, is something I am very proud to be. Alan Johnson was the MP for Hullwest and Heselt for over 20 years, and he built a formidable and proud reputation as a national political figure, but most importantly for the people of Hullwest and Hesel, Alan was a well-respected local MP, working hard to represent the people who elected him to this House. Notably, Alan worked tirelessly to rectify the appalling injustice and hardship suffered by the trawler men of Hull and their families. This righting of wrongs earned him the everlasting respect and admiration of the city. Alan's lifestyle story is a journey from absolute poverty to high office. It's a story of triumph over adversity, and this is all well documented in his autobiography. And I know he wouldn't want me to miss an opportunity to mention that if you're interested in reading more about Alan's life, his three <laughs> autobiographies are available in all good bookshops. <laughs> My path has been different to Alan's, but I'm incredibly proud to have also come from a strong trade unionist background. Yeah. I'm proud to have been a primary teacher. I've never worked for an MP, and I haven't come from a family of politicians. My journey has been paved here by my desire to right some wrongs. And we have all, every one of us, made sacrifices to be here. And so have all of our families, and in particular my two wonderful daughters, Olivia and Isabel. But it is a sacrifice that must be made because politics cannot be the preserve of the rich, powerful and privileged. Yeah. Back in 2011, when I first started campaigning against the changes to education, I was told that my opinion was unimportant because I was only a part-time infant school teacher. But in the words of the Dalai Lama, if you think you're too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. <laughs> I am honoured to be a patron of the Warren and Hull, which gives support to marginalised and vulnerable young people. And one of the things I would love my legacy to be is that I encouraged and inspired so many other people who were also told that their opinions didn't matter to get involved in politics, because everybody matters equally. Now, I've heard many maiden speeches and people talk of the beauty of their constituency, but what makes a place is not the rolling hills, it's not the lakes, it's not the skyscrapers. What makes a place beautiful is the people that live there. And that is why Hull Western Hesel is the best place to live <laughs> and why I'm so honoured to be their Member of Parliament and represent them. And it's not a stereotype to say that people from the north are friendly and compassionate. It's quite simply a statement of fact. <laughs> <laughs> but never mistake friendliness and compassion for weakness. Charles I learnt not to underestimate the people of Hull when he was turned away from Hull in 1642, leading to the siege of Hull, an event that was a major step on the road to the English Civil War. And nor did anybody underestimate one of Hull's other famous sons, William Wilberforce, in his tireless fight to end slavery. And more recently, the headscarf revolutionaries, a group of women from Hull who took on the establishment in the 1960s to improve safety in the trawler industry. And this year is an incredible year for Hull. We are the city of culture. And I take this opportunity to extend a welcome to everybody to come back to ours and experience it for yourself. <laughs> and as an infant teacher, I used to give my pupils a historical tour of the city, pointing out the evidence of our fishing heritage, our magnificent 13th century minster, and our beautiful architecture. So if you come up, I'll even throw in a free tour. This weekend, Hull is hosting the National UK Pride event, and I'm delighted to be involved. And good luck to the Honourable Member on the opposite benches for his uh, task in trying to get Stoke on Trent as City of Culture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm incredibly proud to represent Hesel as well, the town where I live, where my girls attend the school, most famously known for the Humber Bridge, which just this week has been given Grade 1 listed status, but I also highly recommend the Hesel Feast. Since it was as an infant teacher that I became politicised, it will become no surprise to anybody that I want to focus the House's attention on education and speech during this important debate on drugs. 
there must be a drugs education programme as part of a wider personal, social and health education to keep our children safe. But PHSE, like so many arts subjects, is being pushed out because of the high stakes accountability in our school. There is no point having a drugs education programme if there is no time to teach it. Some parents can compensate for the narrowing of this curriculum by paying for music, dance, art, drama or sports club. But many can't, and we are wasting the talents and abilities of so many of our children because of the failed way we judge schools. And this pressure that schools are face is manifesting itself as pressure on our children. And now the Prime Minister thinks that schools can solve the mental health crisis facing our children. This mental health crisis is contributed by her government's education assessment system. And we should not be making our schools learning factories who churn out compliant, unquestioning units for work. We want our children to be creative, to question, to inquire, to explore and to think independently, especially during this era of fake news. Yeah. We are discussing the reform of drugs law without asking ourselves if we only ever teach our children to obey adults unquestioningly, how can they ever understand when they shouldn't? Education provided my father his route out of poverty and the route for his three brothers too. My dad left education with next to nothing in the way of qualifications and it was through evening classes and FE that he went on to become a local primary head teacher. The underinvestment in further education is denying people that second chance. 31% of children in Hull live in poverty and I don't think it's right for any child's life story to be determined by birth. But with the cuts facing Hull College, Shore Start and all of education, how can we say that we are giving our young people today those same opportunities and those same second chances? But it's not just Effie that's suffering, it's all of education. And whilst I welcome the recent announcement for extra funding, it's not enough. Inflation and other factors mean that schools still face real-term cuts to their budgets. And these cuts are driving up class sizes, reducing the number of teaching assistants, increasing the number of unqualified teachers and reducing the curriculum options available. Now, one of the crucial lessons in life, which everybody, everybody across all benches has learned, is that when you fall down, you've got to pick yourself back up again. But I know I can because I'm lucky. I have two brilliant parents who are always there for me. But we are selling a lie if we don't acknowledge how much harder it is for some people. It's like telling them it's a fair fight when they start with two hands tied behind their backs already on the ground. And this is why I'm fighting for fairer funding for Hull City Council. They've seen cuts in their core spending power by 32% since 2010. They cannot invest in those services to really help people have that fair start and equal chance when all they are doing is managing year-on-year -year cuts. And all these drugs education programmes need funding properly, funding properly too, if we want them to be successful. The political choices made by this government to cut benefits, especially to disabled people, to underinvest in education, to underinvest in our NHS, to deny our public sector workers a pay rise, and making people in Hull Western Hesel suffer. And I am here to represent everyone in Hull Western Hesel, not just those who voted for me, and not just those on the electoral roll. I want to be the voice for everyone, and I will hold this government to account for their decisions. And I stand here with my colleagues on these benches to say that there is an alternative. Because austerity is a political choice, and one I will always choose to oppose. Yeah. Yeah.